So my name is Dominik Zerka. Uh, I work at the uh, University of Science and Technology in Krakow. Uh, and I work mainly in, um, in signal processing, uh, in machine learning. And I notice in these uh, areas, uh, I use uh, randomness quite a lot. Uh, and um, the way I perceive this randomness um, might be quite different from the popular view on randomness is. And uh, I think this difference between seeing randomness in science and um, in intuition, in human intuition, may lead to some differences also uh, in understanding some concepts um, in faith. So I think it's interesting to, to show uh, how we understand the randomness in engineering and uh, in, especially in machine learning. So uh, the first thing is, um, does randomness exclude purpose? Uh, in engineering, we usually uh, we can quite often use randomness as a tool to achieve some purpose. And an uh, example of uh, such um, approach would be this uh, one which I quickly present. So we want to make an algorithm for autonomous car driving. We have a model of a car. This uh, car has uh, five sensors of distance, uh, one on the front, two on the sides, and two on the, on the uh, corners. And inside we have this card, we have some kind of neural network which takes this input uh, and um, outputs the control signal for, for wheels. It can accelerate, it can brake, turn left or right. And we want to somehow learn this network to, uh, to steer this car. Um, so what do we do? Uh, to be exact, this network works somehow. We don't know how it works actually. Uh, you can treat it as a black box with uh, a certain number of knobs. You can turn these knobs uh, whatever way you want. But the, 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 your aim is to uh, set it up so it controls the car in a rational way. So what do we do? Uh, okay, so we set the knobs to random values, totally random values. Uh, the result is quite uh, predictable. So the car, the, the car which are generated in this way, they crash quite, quite soon. Uh, but some of them crash earlier, some of them crash uh, uh, later, right? So we, after this uh, first experiment, we take the two, two cars which uh, crashed at the end, at the, um, which, which made through this, through this, through this race, tra race track and uh, had uh, good results. Um, we take these two cars uh, and we combine them. We combine the randomly generated neural networks uh, in the way that we take some parameters from one network and the, some parameters for the other networks. Um, we repeat this combination 200 times to generate 200 new cars, which are um, which are inherit inheriting these uh, random weights from the, from their uh, ancestors, from their so-called parents. Uh, and what is more, we add some additional randomness to this um, new generated cars. Um, so, so far we are using only, using only randomness and uh, choice of the best cars uh, which perform in uh, each round. Uh, so in the second round, uh, I'm not showing animation but only final result. Um, okay, there is not much different. Cars still crash, but there are three cars which reach um, the same point as previously only two cars reached. Uh, but in the next uh, round, not quite a lot the number of cars uh, reach, this, uh, reach this point. Of course, between iterations, we repeat this procedure of random picking, random combining the features of the best cars, and also random dis uh, disturbing their weights. And after some iterations, uh, actually after five iterations, uh, you can see that quite a lot of cars uh, are able to turn, to go through the first uh, curve, to turn right, and some of, the, of this number are also uh, able to turn uh, left. And in the stage six of this experiment, one of the cars is able to go through the, all of this uh, of this race track. So the only thing which we did was uh, random generation of the weights of these networks, of random, random parameterization of these networks uh, inside the cars and random combining and also adding some randomness. So uh, this, uh, this whole procedure is based on a, of a, um, 
It's called genetic algorithm. It's based on uh, uh, is based on biological evolution, uh, and also we have very often we have a question: Is evolution random? So is this algorithm random? Yeah, from one side it is random because we are using this randomness in each stage. We are adding some randomness. We are combining this uh, um, cars randomly. So there's a lot of randomness. On the other side. On the other hand, uh, there is also a um, quite deterministic rule of choosing the best cars, and uh, the environment is choosing uh, what, is, what is actually the notion of the best. So it's, uh, it, I think it's not fair to say it's purely random. Uh, on the other hand, um, does this procedure have a, um, which is a purpose? Actually, okay, we are using it to achieve some purpose to generate this algorithm for uh, driving, rather, uh, driving a, a car. And um, after some of these iterations, we, we get this network which uh, serves its, its purpose. So, okay, we can say it, it has a purpose. On the other hand, uh, if we run this whole algorithm again from the, from the scratch, from the very start, and we would, we would uh, draw out different random numbers, probably we would get a different neural network at the end, which is still working well, but it is different. So in this regard, we can say it, it is quite, it is um, not, not a reaching the same result in terms of the same neural networks every time, but it reaches uh, the result in terms of producing a good, um, good neural network which serves its purpose. Uh, so different other, Okay, so to, to clarify things a little bit, this way of um, uh, generating neural networks, uh, training neural networks, not, is not the most, most widespread uh, way of generating networks nowadays uh, because it's not so much efficient. But the main algorithm which we use for uh, training neural networks, which is called backpropagation, is also using randomness. And without this randomness, we would have uh, problems with reaching some uh, solving some, some, some problems with, uh, with neural networks. So randomness is a tool which is uh, very useful in, in engineering, in designing, in reaching some purposes in engineering. Uh, the, another question is, um, what is the relationship of randomness and freedom? Here I can show you the example on, of an uh, algorithm of compression, which is kind of related to this issue. Uh, so here you can see the painting of Caravaggio, uh, the calling of St. Matthew. Uh, this, uh, this picture, when it's uncompressed, it's when every pixel is written to the, to the file uh, separately, um, it takes about 4.6 megabytes. But when you compress it, uh, it takes only half of a megabyte. Uh, so how is it possible? Um, even uh, more interesting things uh, shows up when you uh, plot the contents of this uh, compressed file, actually, uh, as a pixels. I, I plotted them to here to, next to the original, um, original painting. So the file inside looks quite random. There's nothing which resembles the original uh, picture. And the question is how this random values uh, can be related to this original, uh, quite non-random painting. So how does it work? Uh, okay, so it works, um, uh, the things is our the paintings, the images in general, um, have some redundancy. The, the pixels nearby uh, are similar to each other. And we can use this similarity uh, to, to make some compression, to instead of saving, for example, each pixel separately, you can only say differences between neighboring pixels, and these differences are quite small usually, so um, it will be saved in a smaller number of bits and will take less space. That's a, a simple idea how to make a simple compression. Uh, so that's the main idea, but the question is how this randomness uh, appears in this uh, in this com compressed version of uh, image. Um, the compression in general is uh, composed of two things. First is to find the rules which can describe the, um, the thing which are compressing, which is 
in our case, uh, we the, the rule is okay. The, the pixels are dependent, right? They are statistically dependent, so we don't have to uh, describe them separately. You can th there is some rule which governs this uh, similarity between pixels, and we extract this uh, this rule of similarity of images into the, the uh, encoder and the decoder of um, algorithm. But what is left when we take out what is expected uh, from the image, what is left is unexpected. The unexpected numbers, uh, the degrees of freedom, parameters, you can tell it what you want. So if these numbers which, we, which are left from this decomposition into known rules and something else, uh, these numbers are they are like a free. They are not uh, not related to each other. They are statistically uh, independent. So they look like random. So uh, as, as a, in the end, we get the uh, this result, which looks a bit random. Uh, but you can ask, okay, this is maybe a special kind of random pattern. Maybe what if we just take different random pattern, just generate randomly, not uh, the one generated from the actual image, and we put it into this uh, decoder, what would happen? We, we, would we get the, some interesting results, something which looks reasonable, or just uh, some weird thing? Uh, so it's not easy to do this experiment with uh, JPEG compression, but uh, there are some uh, algorithms quite recently introduced which are designed exactly for this purpose. You putting the random values and the inputs, and you need you are expected to get some reasonable output output um, at the end of this algorithm of the decoder. Uh, so you can generate this uh, random things for yourself using this web web page. This person does not exist, and here you have examples of. Um, some people who does not exist, which were generated randomly, actually, from this kind of decoder, which is neural network. Uh, yeah, so uh, this kind of neural network is called uh, generative adversarial network. Uh, okay, it's trained in a way that it uh, gets the images on the input. Uh, and we try to map these images to the some kind of random cloud uh, at the other side of this uh, decoder, uh, and okay, each each image corresponds to the, to the dot on the left, um, each, each image in our training set. And you, if you put additional dots um, to the input of this uh, of this network, you get additional output image of a face, which looks quite uh, quite quite nice in quite a good way. Uh, so, the main point of this of this part is uh, you have random inputs that generate things which are structured, which are partially at least ordered. There, there is some uh, meaning in in them as long as you have proper um, encoding rule, like a machine which turns this randomness into something meaningful. Um, okay. The thing is, uh, we have a lot of things which are. We have structure. We have which are partially ordered. I think, uh, okay, images are partially ordered. They have structure, but also the universe is has some structure and there is some order in, in it and also some degrees of freedom, and this also um, relates to, to human. There is there is uh, some degrees of freedom freedom in us, and there is also some structure. Um, so uh, maybe it's possible to do this kind of decomposition also for for universe, and in this in such case we would have this uh, decoder encoder part uh, to be um, the laws of the universe, right? Um, which are usually mathematical and they can be considered as a nature of something, nature of a universe. Uh, and something which is left, which is this random code, the pure information, which we uh, need to input to these laws to get the, the result, which is our universe. But maybe the same refers to the human. Maybe, maybe it's possible to uh, think about, our, about ourselves as a composition of some nature uh, and some degrees of freedom, which may look random. But um, in composition of this nature, they create uh, 
a human mind um, which can be rational and free at the same time. Um, that would uh, allow us, allow to uh, like a control human body through this randomness of quantum mechanics or maybe different uh, different uh, ideas. Uh, and in a case of um, using this idea to God's influence to the world, um, maybe it's possible that God controls uh, the world, influences the world, and not in a way that uh, he's making like a, um, big interventions, breaking off um, physical laws, but instead uh, he simply selects some random patterns in quantum mechanics uh, or in the beginning of the world, uh, which are which look random, but they contain this uh, information which makes this world uh, an our world. Um, and in the end, I, uh, I added some um, part from the Holy Bible. Uh, when the Eliach uh, approaches the, the, the Lord, and the Lord is not in the earthquake, uh, not in the uh, strong wind, but in the gentle whisper. Lord is not uh, not acting through the hard acts, but gently, maybe through the sandalness. Thank you very much.